So when you want to dip your toe into the automatic pocket knife arena, but you'd rather not spend a couple hundred dollars on an auto and you'd rather work your way up to that and save yourself a little bit of money, but kind of get used to the action and see if you really like it. The Boker Knives Kalashnikov 74 has truly been the standard of budget friendly autos to kind of get your foot in the door. You know, they got tons of different shapes, sizes, even a massive double XL version like this one right here. So many different blade shapes, color combinations that are available. But say you already have that model or that handle profile just isn't to your liking. Well, recently, Boker Knives and Justin Lundquist have partnered with Blade HQ to give us an exclusive automatic knife in the Aluvila coming in at sub $100 with D2 steel having a lot of kind of the characteristics that we like and know from the Kalashnikov series, but with a very organic, very EDC friendly profile and design. And now that I've had a chance to carry it and put it through its paces, I'm gonna break down some characteristics and design features, but there is one design characteristic that is concerning to me that is going to require me to disassemble this knife with you to see if I can fix it and whether or not I can put it all back together without ruining the action and the mechanism. So thanks for joining me today and let's jump on in. All right, let's get after this thing. Man, very cool lines. That is what I connected with right away. You know, I've loved my Kalashnikov for years, but it definitely has like this utilitarian vibe to it. This is definitely more sleek, streamlined, elegant looking. This is the kind of acid smoke wash with the green handle. They have like black on black or smoke wash and black. And then I believe there is a satin or stone wash blade version with a black handle. So there are a few different color combinations currently. If I know Blade HQ, they will probably come out with a lot of other variants down the line. Now we'll start off here at that blade shape, D2 steel, really cool kind of cuts in and then you got this really long flat clip. I mean, it kind of looks like a clip point even though there's no swedging or cut ins on either side there. So it is a full flat grind which means it's gonna be nice and slicey on an eighth of an inch thick blade. And the blade's gonna be like 3.1 overall. Cutting edge is like gonna be maybe 2.8, 2.8 on the overall cutting edge. I was pretty pleased with the edge geometry. Um, I will probably over time bring it up just a hair, but it was pretty slicey. I only saw it having a little bit of issue with some of the cordage I was running into, uh, but cardboard slicing because of the full flat and everything else seemed to do very well. And then the piercing still able to penetrate even though it is a very precise, thin blade there for packaging material of any kind, you know, it's gonna be able to do that well, but then just easy slicing, you know, just general EDC tasks. I wouldn't put it in like a tactical self-defense role just because there isn't a lot of traction. It is definitely more of like that EDC, whereas again, the Kalashnikov with its heavy jimping and deep, you know, ribbing and guards would be a lot, and grip would be a lot better for that type of role. So even though it can pierce, you know, you can do, definitely do that. And I'm glad they went with D2 Taiwanese made, which is excellent to see that they're still making these over in Taiwan versus other areas. And there's definitely a big difference between Taiwan and other countries in that area. So now onto the action. Now this is funny, um, no safety, but because the button and the pivot match in some ways, I mean, it looks really cool. It's very elegant, but I have many times accidentally hit the pivot instead of the actual fire button. And then like, oh, what's happening? Oh, that's it. So it would have been nice, I think, even though it's raised and smaller, just to have like even a rim of like red or yellow or something, just something to help a little actuate. Cause every once in a while I will go for that instead of the main firing mechanism there. Nice and flush. And then it kind of recesses in the button, which is the pivot lock. You're gonna get that slight wobble side to slide pretty solid up and down standard, which you can get on just about every auto, regardless if you're gonna pay you know, 250 or you're gonna pay <laughs> a 50, either way from every experience I've had with probably half a dozen or more autos, that's what you're gonna get from every type of manufacturer so far that I've seen. And then the button area is basically recessed. So you're not gonna accidentally engage it, no safety. And then you just push that out of the way Good, you can see how deep that cut in is right there. Good resistance. Let's see if I can do it one handed here. Good snappy action too. You know, I like that action. Good centering and good tip 
recession. The tip is nice and recessed in there. I can't hit it with my finger when I run my finger in there. So it's nice and recessed, good slim profile. Full textured aluminum handle scales. You know, it's really hard to tell the difference between titanium and aluminum if it's milled well. And you can just see here, look at that. Great, very light texturing, but texturing, you know, it's not smooth on either side. And then some ribbing and then little hits of jimping, nothing sharp anywhere, all rounded, all super ergonomic, basically just two slabs of aluminum, you know, and, and I'm not seeing too much wear on there. Over time, you'll probably start to see some wear like I got here. This has been well loved for several years on this particular bench, uh, excuse me, Boker. Kalashnikov um, there, but as of yet, I'm not seeing really any wear marks. And it's gonna weigh a pretty lightweight 3.11 ounces. Overall length of 4.43, fills out my large size hands very easily. Got you just a little bit of a guard there. Again, that little hit of jimping just fills out my hand easily. No hot spots, felt really good. Even in a reverse grip, if you were doing stabbing, the contouring up there grips you really nice and into place. And you will get this pass through lanyard here, kind of interesting, flows in here and then comes out that side. You do have the pocket clip, which, dun, 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 here's our problem. One, it's not ambidextrous, would have liked to see that, not the end of the world, a lot of autos are not, but no ambidextrous feature. Okay, so this is what I'm finding recently with tons of different pocket knives is that Companies are getting super clever with their screw attachments and it's actually becoming a hindrance to the maintenance of the tools. It's getting on my nerves. I'm just gonna be real. So it's blacked out, a little bit of a flare. Initially, I was super pumped. I'm like, this is great, loving every minute of it. And I noticed, oh, there's no screws. Great, that's awesome. They're recessed inside the body in here. We're gonna have to go in there if we ever were to take it off. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I go on with my day carry it for about a week. And this is why I carry my tools, guys. I use this stuff, I carry them, because you find things that if you just do a tabletop, you may not discover. I don't even know what it snagged on, but this snagged on something. And because it, I mean, it seems to be pretty strong. You can see there, it pulled away from the body and now needs to be bent back down. The downside is now we're gonna have to disassemble this tool in order to take the pocket clip off to then rebend the little clip there to make it flush with the body again. Otherwise, it's not really carryable. It's super obnoxious now and just falls out of every pocket. So here we go. You're going to need a T8 for the pivot and you're going to need T6 for the two back. Thankfully, there's only three total. My main concern is the spring. Is the spring going to like launch off? I'm going to lose it in the garage here. Am I going to you know, damage it in some way and not be able to reset it. And just so that you're aware, most manufacturers state that if you disassemble an automatic knife, it will void the warranty. Boker is no exception to this rule. Over on their website, it states that if you disassemble any of their knives, it voids the warranty. Then add to that the fact that you, they state that they, you cannot buy and they do not carry spare coil springs for automatic knives. So if in the process of what I'm about to do, I break the coil spring or I lose it and it shoots off somewhere and I can't find it, I'm just out of knife. I'm there and I can't get my hands on a new spring. Um, and so that is a red flag just for the design. For a simple issue, maintenance problem of a flared out pocket clip, I basically have to send it into warranty in order to get this fixed or take all risk upon myself just to bend the pocket clip back. So do all of this as you're about to see at your own risk and take that into consideration when you are considering this knife in general. Did you just see that? Oh man, that thing bounced. Thankfully, here are the springs. Sadly, I did not see how that came out. Who, buddy. Okay, so that is definitely under some tension. And since this is the first auto I've actually ever disassembled, I'm realizing that was really dumb to not open up the tool first to relieve some of the tension probably on the spring and just keep it from accidentally like smacking open or something as I'm deploying it, hurting myself. They could have just done this. I know it wouldn't have been as elegant, but if they just put a cut in. Guys, I do apologize in advance if the focus point goes out of whack. I'm focusing obviously on the knife. Hopefully this will all go well together here. I will say that it's nice to have this little Blade HQ work pad, grips everything, keeps it from rolling. Never had one quite like this, so it's kind of cool to have that. 
working with metal like this, it's nice to have some sort of cloth or you know paper towel just so that you don't mar the metal when you clamp it and bend it back into place kind of. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And that's about how it came from the factory. So we'll see, we got the pin back in there. Got the spring for the button. Not too difficult to understand where, like which side the spring goes in. So that's good. Nice, okay. Nope, okay, something's wrong there. Okay, now, now we've learned our lesson though. So we're gonna go like this, yeah. Okay, the spring is not engaging with the spine. Okay, I think I got it this time, let's see. There's that, yes, I have tension. Yes, it sits. How did it go here? Oh no. Oh, maybe I put the t pivot too tight. Maybe the pivot's too tight, hold on, hold on, hold on. Back that off just a little. There, yes, yes, all right, we did it. Lock up, same. Okay, so what I had to do, and I, I couldn't have shown it to you on frame, but basically I had to like catch the two pins of the main spring and obviously keep the spring over the button, kind of offset and rotate under tension, put down. I mean, it, it was a little bit of a process, but it wasn't undoable. And I was able to get it done. I will come back before we wrap up this video using this. I'm gonna carry this a bunch to see one, do I flare this out again, catching on something uh, and it just becomes such a nuisance or um, not. So just stay tuned in just a moment after we hit competitive options pricing. This is gonna go for about uh, 70 bucks on average. That's what I paid to pick this guy up. Always appreciate it when you guys use the hyperlinks provided to you below over to Blade HQ in this case or any of the other distributors. Uh, just always appreciate it literally helps me be able to get out here, buy blades like this and do videos like this, show you stuff that you may never see anywhere else on YouTube. And I appreciate you guys coming in week in, week out. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than the Kalashnikov. You know, the Kalashnikov, I believe, you can get the OS 8 version still for like 40 bucks. I believe the D2 for the basic size, this is the regular size version. Um, that might be like 60, I can't remember. I'm just gonna annotate it in, obviously. But uh, for an automatic knife, you're normally gonna have to pay significantly, significantly more to get any sort of automatic option. You know, there are a few out there that you can get for like 120, like the Launch Series. All right, guys, well, it's been several days. I just wanna give you a quick update on how my rebuild on this pocket knife went. The positive thing, I haven't had any issues, no malfunctions. So I seem to have put it back together and rebuilt it properly. No extra wobbling showing up or loosening or the pivot backing out or anything like that. So I was able to fix it, but it is frustrating because this knife is checking many boxes for me and what I look for in an auto. It's got a good value. I like the materials. The profile is awesome. All of these things are working in its favor, but then the fact that if I have ever a flare out issue like I happen to have with this model, I either have to, on the pocket clip, I have to send it in for warranty and who knows how long it's gonna take and just all the hoops that go through that. You gotta pay to ship it in, I think, and like all this other stuff. And then, or take all responsibility upon yourself that if something goes wrong, you're just out a knife to just literally fix a pocket clip it is irritating. And if it was just designed the way like the Kalashnikov was where you can just get to the torque screw exteriorly and you know take it off, tighten it up, do whatever you need to do, bend it back, no problem, then I would I would be like, this is awesome. This is a great addition to the Boker sub hundred dollar you know auto family. As it stands, gosh, you really got to think twice before you know carrying it on a regular basis with the knowledge that we've discovered. So I look forward to hearing your thoughts. What's your take on this blade and whether or not it makes sense for you, and particularly if you own one already, how has it performed for you and what's been your experience? I always look forward to your guys' feedback. Check out the other video popping up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.